Hello. Uh, my name is Milo Taylor, and uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, today's topic is the opioid epidemic, and specifically uh, the argument over whether the giant pharmaceutical company Purdue Pharma Inc. is responsible for kickstarting this opioid epidemic in 1996 when they launched the drug OxyContin. So uh, I read, I wrote a paper on this and very clearly stating my argument, the opposing view. So this video is essentially expanding on a specific part of that paper. So anyone that hasn't read the paper, I strongly recommend reading it before watching this video. Otherwise, you may not understand what I'm talking about at all. So I'm going to give a little bit of context in explaining what the opioid epidemic is. So the opioid epidemic... It essentially refers to the large increase in opioid overdoses and opioid overdose deaths in the last 30 years. So according to the CDC, there's been over 400,000 deaths since the turn of the century up to 2017. And we've recorded more recent increases since 2017. So it's very much ongoing public health problem that I'm very passionate about uh, so today I'm going to specifically talk about Richard Sackler's deposition. So for anyone who doesn't know, Richard Sackler is part of the Sackler family who are the wealthy owners of uh, Purdue Pharma. And Sackler is, was a, is a former CEO of the company. He was very hands-on. Is, um, there is documented evidence that he was clearly very directly involved with the uh, with what the company was doing, specifically with OxyContin. So reading, rereading this portion, this extract of his deposition that is mentioned in the paper. Uh, so I'm going to read this extract from his deposition with the state of Kentucky. Where So here's the extract. It would be extremely dangerous at this early stage in the life of the product, Friedman wrote to Sackler, to make physicians think the drug is stronger or equal to morphine. We are well aware of the view held by many physicians that oxycodone, the active ingredient oxycontin, is weaker than morphine. I do not plan to do anything about that. Armstrong 2019. I agree with you, Sackler responded. Is there a general agreement or are there some holdouts? So this, this passage is very explicit. I mean, I don't really have to comment on it to know that basically there the company knew that physician the general view of physicians was that oxycodone is weaker than morphine the problem with this is that they have a clear intent on on like misleading physicians essentially they're so they're taking advantage of the ignorance of the people that are responsible for prescribing these medications so this is a very troubling statement and uh, um, and it's also in direct um, conflict with what Sackler said uh, in another part of the same deposition with the same in the same court case with the state of Kentucky when he essentially said that he admitted that oxycodone is twice as powerful as morphine and uh, that's actually in the video that's on the blog post. So if you can watch that video, that's like about a four or five minute video that kind of goes over OxyContin versus morphine, which is more powerful, etc. And and Sackler essentially, so this is in direct contradiction with physicians' views. So not only is it e it's not equal to morphine, it's just twice as powerful. And they basically kept doctors in the in the dark for the longest time. So that, and knowing that doctors are the only people that have the authority to prescribe these medications, they are the ones that have to know, right, how powerful OxyContin really is. So um, that is wildly irresponsible, in my view. And any reasonable person would agree that you you should market reasonably to doctors. So just this extract and just that video of uh, Sackler's deposition are just very obvious cues to the fact that OxyContin really irresponsibly mar was ir really irresponsibly marketed. And Richard Sackler was very aware of this, and he is very notorious for being involved, very directly involved in the sales and in the marketing of OxyContin. So just, just this deposition 
is is enough, in my view, to condemn the company, but specifically the Sackler family, because there is there is there is really no way to defend that. And I do want to yield a little bit of ground to the opposing view because it's it's clearly not. You can't say that one company launching one drug is the reason that there's an ongoing crisis right now. Knowing now what, if we, knowing now how potent oxycodone is, technically the opioid crisis shouldn't be continuing because we're well aware now. We have pain plans. We have uh, doctors all aware that oxycodone is twice as twice as po- as potent as morphine, and they should be prescribed with a very uh, wary, they should be very wary when prescribing it. So the opioid crisis shouldn't be continuing, and it is. And uh, if you look at the graph that's documented with the text, you can see that um, uh, semi-synthetic opioids like oxycodone and uh, hydrocodone are are still they're not the leading opioid uh, causing overdoses, but they're pretty far up there. And there's, people are still overdosing on these drugs. More people are overdosing on heroin, which I've commented on in a previous paper while I was discussing uh, why p- patients were switching from uh, prescription opioids to heroin, mainly because it's cheaper and uh, they can get it through an IV versus a pill, which it enters the body much quicker. Its effects are more direct. So I'm kind of going off topic here, but essentially... Um, we can't, we can't say that, uh, all the blame can be put onto one pharmaceutical company because there are other pharmaceutical companies that are also pushing, uh, their drugs very hard, that are also pushing, um, that are marketing very aggressively, um, their products, uh, opioid medications and other powerful medications. So, um, there are also other factors that play into the opioid crisis and and one of them that uh, people don't really comment on in the public arena as much as like controversial issues like this recent uh, court case with kentucky or the the case with oklahoma is uh the fact that uh, a large number of patients in the emergency room are actually pain the drug-seeking patients that may not be in any pain at all but uh According to this recent study uh, by the Western Journal of Emergency Medicine, pain is cited as the most common reason for visits to the emergency department. In 1997, 94.9 million ED visits, accounting for 22% of all ED visits, resulted in the administration of pharmacotherapy for pain. So this doesn't clearly indicate that most patients are drug seekers, but it does indicate the large number of patients in the ER that are seen or that are seen there with complaints of severe acute pain and they resulted in prescribing or ordering medications such as opioids and they say pharmacotherapy for pain that's very much implied and this is a 2012 study so this is very much in the context of the opioid crisis um and so there's no this study by no means implies that patients are lying to get pain meds there's really no way of proving that so there is really no way. There's no study that can actually show whether patients are lying to physicians, you about their pain level or whether they're drug seeking or whether they're whether they they're using the emergency room as a a haven for for their drug use. But it clearly this clearly sh- shows that uh, a large number of patients um, receive opioids, and it's very questionable how many of them out of all those actually need them. And basically we can't get rid of opioids. Like they're necessary because there's patients like cancer patients, post-operative patients that need opioids because they're in severe acute pain that needs immediate remedy. And, uh, and uh, so going back to the, the deposition and which one is more potent between op- between morphine and oxycontin well morphine we all know this well we may not all know this but morphine is only prescribed now to cancer patients it's ordered and given in the er 
um, or in the hospital for people in pain, but it's, it's very rarely prescribed medication. It's really only prescribed for cancer patients or for people who have really severe chronic pain. And uh, I don't want to go into the details of pain management, but uh, essentially, so what does this tell us? If, if oxycodone is twice as powerful as morphine and morphine is only prescribed to cancer patients or people that have severe similar pain, Oxycodone should not be pre- should also only be prescribed to to patients with that kind of pain and not to 94 million people and and not prescribed for like back aches and toothaches and and but that's how oxycodone oxycontin was was uh, marketed it was marketed as a non addictive opioid and that's the biggest problem I have with all of it it's not the idea that uh, that Purdue Pharma were trying to profit from this medication. Obviously, they're trying to profit. They're a company. That's their goal. That's their purpose. Uh, the purpose of a company is to make money. And I don't have a problem with a company making a lot of money from a um, pharmaceutical product. What I do have a problem with is lying to the public, but specifically to physicians about how powerful their medication is and about how addictive it is and what its uses should be. That is the biggest problem, was the marketing of OxyContin. It wasn't just aggressive, it was false. There was a lot of misinformation and information that was known by the company and withheld from the public and from doctors, which is why doctors ended up prescribing OxyContin so widely, which is what ended up causing so many overdoses and eventually overdose deaths and um, and essentially kickstarted the opioid crisis. So really this is kind of where I want to end this piece was I wanted to comment on Sackler's deposition in a little bit um, more specific way on like what he said to the lawyers in Kentucky what his view is, and it's kind of hard to see or hard to, to um, know what he what he thinks because he's been on and off. He's like, in one situation, he'll say that um, he's fine with doctors being unaware that uh, oxycodone is more powerful than morphine or even equal to morphine. In another situation, he actually admits that oxycodone is way more powerful than morphine and he did want doctors to know about it, but but this was in 2015, which is some 20 years after oxycodone oxycontin was launched. So it's very hard to know what the Sacklers want, what they think, and how they're defending themselves because they they've been very inconsistent. And Richard Sackler specifically, we can talk about David Sackler and what he said, and he was a little bit more honest and. In saying that his family is responsible for the crisis, but um, but Richard Sackler essentially here is it's very hard to know what what he's saying because and so this deposition tells us a lot, but it doesn't tell us the whole picture. Is basically what I'm trying to wrap up my argument here with is that yeah, it gives us a lot of information because it tells us that Purdue was very directly involved with the marketing of OxyContin and that it did kickstart the crisis. To me, there's no doubt. But it doesn't tell us what the ultimate, um, this other than money, what the motivation of the company was, what the motivation of the family was. And uh, there's another video on the ProPublica website of Sackler admitting that he didn't know how much money the company made and the family made from OxyContin, despite being so involved and him talking about dedicating his life to um, the success of OxyContin, him not knowing what the ultimate profit was from the sale of that drug. To me, that's there's a lot he doesn't know. There's a lot he claims to not know. But him have the family and him having lied about the potency of oxycontin and it's very hard to know what's true and what's not true and what they're still withholding and which is why it's interesting to see these ongoing cases and what comes out of them and because the, the more scrutiny 
um, the family is put under, the more information we're going to get. So I think that really the main recommendation would be to keep for states to keep pushing to get more information and to get to find out what the family did and didn't do when uh, when launching OxyContin and and also uh, finding out um, what they what they're doing now to reduce to reverse the epidemic essentially so we know that we've pa- they've paid states millions of dollars which for them is nothing because he, they know it's more than a billion dollars in sales from OxyContin alone. So paying 270 million to Oklahoma and 70 or so million to Kentucky, to them that's, that is just the cost of doing business or this, it's just a fraction of their income. So it's not, the money is not their problem. Their problem is uh, what are they doing with their, the, how they're marketing their drugs to reverse the epidemic, to reduce or, and to prevent a future one from happening. So this is kind of where I want to conclude is basically um, to say that we have very firm evidence that Purdue single-handedly kickstarted the crisis. Whether they're responsible for what's going on right now and the continued, uh, continued high rates of overdose deaths, that we can't say. And we also can't say how involved Sackler was because of how careful he is in his deposition. And so it's hard, it's hard to say how involved the family was, but we can definitely say that, um, that this sort of, this side of the argument is really hard to do. It's really hard to defend Purdue essentially. And, um, and, uh, Basically, um, I think that the biggest information, the most information we can get out of it and the most valuable information we can get out of it is that there is no such thing as a non-addictive opioid. That basically any, any medication that's in the family of fentanyl, morphine, oxycodone, hydrocodone, all these, even semi-synthetic opioids, they're all potent, they're all addictive, and they should all have very narrow uses. And now we all know this, but, and there's very severe scrutiny with pain plans and uh, schedule two prescriptions and the DEA being way more involved. So um, the main recommendation is there's, is twofold. Number one, to keep scrutinizing companies like Purdue, not just Purdue because there are other companies that are also doing the same thing. And second, to, um, continue uh, scrutinizing the prescription of your opioids and look following patients that are on one or multiple opioids and what pain they're being treated for, what symptoms they're having, and what diagnosis they're having too because um, a patient can be in severe pain, pain being a very subjective uh, a very subjective thing and not a pain is not a diagnosis ultimately. Knowing a patient's diagnosis and following them, is and their physician which basically what a pain plan is is i think the best way to not maybe try and reverse the epidemic and prevent any future one from happening so thank you for watching i hope this information was useful i hope um even though i am standing my ground i'm not i'm not gonna go ahead and say that purdue is not responsible for the crisis because they obviously are but i wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt with these videos and with these depositions on basically what exactly they did and what they didn't do. And uh, I think that we don't know everything, but we know a lot. And uh, the more we seek to find out, uh, the more information we're going to ultimately get. So I think that's really the, uh, the conclusion we can, can make is that Purdue is directly responsible for the beginning of the crisis. They misled the public and physicians with the marketing of OxyContin, second. And third is where where we should go from now. And I've already mentioned that. So uh, scrutinizing the companies, scrutinizing physicians and patients in terms of how and when 
opioids are used. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this, yeah, as I said, I hope this was helpful. And uh, if you haven't read the paper, please read it. It'll give you some more context on um, on uh, the whole issue and uh, anything that I didn't specify or mention should be in the paper. Thank you.